Hi everyone, I'm Alessia. I do a PhD in cognitive neuroscience and today I'm going to share my top tips for successful teaching experience during your PhD. Let's start with something very basic, that is how to search for teaching opportunities, because apparently this is not straightforward. My number one way to go about it would be to ask your supervisor first. Of course, your boss has to approve you teaching, because that's going to be happening during your office hours, but also they might have some ideas or professors, colleagues who might be interested in the PhD students who would be either teaching assistants or give some seminars or do some interventions during their lectures. Another way to go would be to ask around your doctoral school and university because there are usually some doctoral programs that imply that PhD students are teaching. Usually they've got a whole list of courses and you can apply with your own resume and they would try to match the two, your resume with the list of courses. And if you're lucky, you can get one or two courses for that. Another way to do it would be to go a bit outside the box and try to check out with the language center of your university or of the universities in your area. Especially if you are doing your PhD abroad, you can not necessarily teach your own language, your native language or English, but rather teach a language for specific purposes like this, you would be able to adapt your program to the content that you want to teach that might also be in a different language, in English, for example, that might be a big advantage for those who do not master the language of the country. Okay, so now let's move on to how to be successful before your semester starts. There are several ways of teaching classes. For example, the secretary might give you a teaching program that you will be asked to follow, or you may be given a set of presentations that you will be asked to simply reproduce in class in front of your students. Or there could be another scenario where you will be free to do whatever you want with the content of the course, just following the very broad overlying given by the secretary, deciding whatever you want to teach. Personally, I had the last option and easily adapt the course to whatever you want to teach, whatever you know better or whatever you want to get to know better, you can adapt it to your own interest, as well as you can easily tailor it to the needs of your students. Try to prepare your preliminary program as early as possible. It will help your course immensely to look like a one logical unit, as well as save you so much time during the semester. All right then, so now let's talk about how to effectively manage the workflow during the semester. Depending on the university and the department where you are teaching, you might be interested in networking with your colleagues on other terms not related to teaching per se. Maybe there would be a professor who's sitting in the same room and does similar things to what you're doing, or maybe that would be just simply colleagues who can teach you how to handle classes in a simpler and easier way. Because when you are a PhD student, there might be the case that you've never ever tried teaching before, and that it is a new experience for you. And we are not born to be teachers. Take this advantage and try to learn from your colleagues. Perfectionism is your enemy during the semester. Just make sure that you do put some kind of content in your slides, but don't try to make it perfect because that takes so much time. I personally think that during your PhD, that's not your priority. This is the first class that you are ever teaching. Just make sure that you are very open-minded and there are going to be so many circumstances influencing the way the class goes and it's not necessarily your abilities to teach that matter. It's mostly your ability to adapt to constantly changing conditions to some emergencies happening to students not preparing their work and the situation when you have to make up a new exercise just on the spot. What I do is I have a set of printed vocabulary exercises. So whenever I have this pause and I don't know what to give them or something went unplanned, I'm just using this moment to give them this extra exercise that I keep in, in my teaching drawer. And I 
again, do not forget that you're doing your PhD. It's not for teaching. That is something that might coexist with your program, but it cannot become your main focus during your program. Make sure you put your research ahead of teaching. All right, so now let's move on to the next section, which is how to deal with the assessments. Prioritize multiple choice questions over any kind of written exercises. This is the mistake that I've done when for the midterm exam, I first suggested them to read a paper and write an abstract. And then I've spent several weeks just checking their abstracts because I really, really wanted to give them some actual feedback. Group presentations are great, not only because they are engaging, because not everyone gets to speak during the classes, but during the group assessments they do, so that's good. But it also a great time killer in a sense that you can give them several sessions to prepare for their group presentations during class and then when they present you don't have to so that saves you lots of time to keep my students engaged this semester i asked them to rate the group presentations of their colleagues that doesn't really influence their grades much but that gives them this feeling of democracy or the feeling that their opinion can be heard and also it keeps them engaged in a sense that they have to listen to your presentation in order to rate it. Now let's move on to my favorite part which is how to make the most out of this experience for your CV and for your future perspectives. Repeating classes is great because most of the times you have mastered the material that you were given during the first semester and now you can make it even better every time you duplicate it. If your salary for teaching is the one that you really count on, I guess replicating your course can be a really low effort and energy saving option. However, you should always remember that repeating the class doesn't give you another line in your resume. Maybe putting more effort into other aspects of your PhD might be more beneficial than just spending another 30 hours to replicate something that you've done already. This also depends on the duration of the PhD, so if it's three years, maybe you don't want to do that, uh, but if it's five, maybe you might be fine with trying to make the most out of your course, as well as you should always base your decision on the workload that you've got in the lab, because sometimes it might be more reasonable to concentrate your effort onto publishing and making more experiments. My last point is that teaching during your PhD might be a very interesting experience, as plenty of future research positions are associated with teaching, more or less. So again, for me, this part is about treating your PhD program as a playground. Do experiments on yourself. How do you feel presenting in front of a class of students? Is it important for you to be altruistic and to teach others to do something new? Do you like evaluating others and most likely do you like to provide feedback to other people? And if you do, maybe are there any other opportunities to do that, not necessarily teaching? So take it as an opportunity to get you to know yourself better, whether you want to do it in the future or no. It's time to have an idea now. Another point is that, again, you can tailor this experience to your own interests. So I was, for example, interested in ways to automatize research, my own research, and I wanted to know how to read articles better in a more efficient way. So I decided to teach that during my class. I also told students how to apply to internships because I've been receiving so many applications that were not just exceeding my expectations. I wanted to prevent them from making the same mistakes. I really wanted to encourage them to apply to research internships at all. And then if they do apply with a nice cover letter with a more or less respectful application. When your class ends, ask your students to evaluate you as a teacher. That will help you to quantify your teaching experience in your resume. You can just create your own Google form and ask them to fill it in during the last class. So the sixth part of this video is going to be about my personal experience. Feel free to watch my other videos on that topic. I found teaching a very much appropriate experience during the second year of my PhD. Because now I don't have much data to analyze, I might, the pressure is not that high yet, I don't have to deliver results and publications yet. At the same time, I really wanted to try it, I really want to get to know my preference, whether I want to continue doing that in the future or not. So my conclusion is 
that I wouldn't mind doing some interventions in other people's courses but at the same time I'm not ready to dedicate myself fully to teaching because that takes so much of my energy and doesn't give me that much of a satisfaction. Seminars or from time to time doing some lectures as well as speaking during conferences and mentoring others is also something that really pleases me both in a way of supervision because now I've got several master's students and bachelor's students too but then also mentoring in just a freelance form find people who need my advice and I think also YouTube channel is part of this but I really want to avoid long-term teaching contracts the last point is that lately my experiments were postponed because of uh, administrative regulations and teaching made me feel like there's something to do as if I have something important and thus it decreased my anxiety level that was getting really high so that was a very good timing a nice experience that showed me what I am able to do and what I really want to do so that was it for today's video thanks for staying until the end and I'll see you in the next one bye